conference with many uh, interesting uh, presentations that I've been attending already and learning from. And uh, now I am sharing my screen. I just want to confirm that you can see uh, my screen. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Yes. Okay, so um, uh, my focus area is uh, I'm uh, doing uh, the PhD studies on, on international relations and um, a lot of attention uh, these days is uh, focused in international relations on the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, uh, the, the war in Ukraine. And therefore, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, this uh, conflict from a multidisciplinary uh, practical uh, research point of view, um, because um, uh, what what, uh, what is happening is that it's bringing a lot of attention because people try to understand why this conflict happened and why it is uh, going on. And uh, uh, therefore, uh, it, it seems like it is not only uh, the sort of classical uh, clash here between uh, sort of capitalism and the communism, but uh, rather it is more like a, a civilizational conflict here, uh, which uh, requires uh, a lot of multidisciplinary research to understand uh, the situation uh, because it uh, relates to peace and uh, war research. But uh, there is also a lot of influences from religions uh, in the clash of civilization. Uh, is there an ongoing secularization? And uh, also, uh, what other factors can have an influence on this? And if we look at uh, uh, the next uh, slide here in my presentation, uh, I am, uh, as uh, usual, I am referring to the clash of civilizations in my research and uh, this very important book uh, published by the Harvard professor Samuel P. Huntington on remaking uh, the world order. And in this research that uh, was uh, not completed, there is uh, described that uh, there is an ongoing Western decay in the Western civilization. Um, however, um, many questions are still outstanding. Uh, for example, is there a secularization or is there not? And these kind of questions. But if you look at the, the next slide, going back to year 1997, uh, then we can see that Professor Huntington was describing the relationships between the West and the Russian uh, civilization as less conflictual. That means that uh, the conflicts were not uh, at that time um, uh, very large. They, they were there were much more conflicts between almost all other civilizations, but uh, between the Western civilization and uh, the Russian civilization, it was a very peaceful and calm relationships between in, for 25 years ago. So um, then uh, the research uh, uh, that is going on is in international relations is to understand why has this changed over the last 25 years? What has changed and what, what, uh, why is uh, there now a, a conflict uh, going on? And if we look at, uh, for example, a, a recent uh, research study published by the University of Chicago, uh, they found that 64% um, uh, of uh, the people in Russia, they see the conflict in Ukraine as a civilizational struggle between Russia and the West. So they, they see it as a clash of civilizations and not uh, in the classic Cold War mentality uh, sort of viewpoint. Uh, also, 68% uh, of the Russians are concerned about the Western HBTQ values, and therefore they feel that they want to defend Russia. And 95% of the Russian people are, uh, are saying that they are proud of Russia. So uh, we are finding a little bit of a new uh, data here compared to how it was uh, during the Cold War. And the big change here is that... Um, we see uh, Russian uh, people are concerned about uh, the, the increased secularization of the Western uh, civilization. Uh, and um, if we look at uh, a research uh, study done by the Pew Research Center in America, uh, they have discovered that um, uh, if we look at uh, mainly Western Europe and America, we see that um, uh, more than 50% are actually supporting uh, same-sex marriage and uh, HBTQ values. So a majority in the Western uh, civilization is now supporting those HBTQ values that uh, uh, Russia feel uh, is a sort of a threat to the Russian civilization. Uh, while if we look at the, the bottom part of this graph, we see that uh, uh, many countries, especially in Asia and uh, Africa, they have more uh, traditional values and uh, especially larger belief in uh, religion. And uh, 
because of uh, the religious uh, beliefs, uh, they are uh, less inclined to support those uh, uh, HBTQ values. And therefore, um, the multidisciplinary research is becoming very important for the West to understand the Western decay. And there has been a, a, a very one-sided flow of research from the West to Africa and to Asia, but very little from Africa and Asia to Europe and to also to America. And I think one of the important things going into the future with regards to multidisciplinary research is that um, the West should not only educate the world, but uh, the West should also learn from uh, the rest of the world uh, about uh, what uh, may be the peaceful benefits of uh, traditional values, which are supported by Professor Huntington in his research that um, uh, a civilizational values based on re religious, religious values is the big, greatest safeguard for security and peace into the future. And if we look at uh, uh, what has happened in Europe, uh, in year 2020, the United Nations, they sent a report to the Vatican uh, about gender equality policies, uh, secular uh, United Nations values. Uh, the Vatican just ripped that report and said that is unacceptable and offensive. However, if we look three years later in year 2023, the Pope uh, in the Vatican has now made uh, female leaders uh, at the Vatican and uh, gender equality is coming into uh, increasingly into the Western uh, civilization and the values. So um, we see that secular values are uh, infringing and coming into power into the religious center of uh, Europe and the Western civilization with the Pope now blessing uh, same-sex couples and marriages. Uh, uh, that, that means the HBTQ values are getting increasingly strong in the Western civilization and therefore Russia um, correctly states that uh, they want to defend the Russian civilizations against uh, the increased HBTQ values in the West. However, if we look at uh, uh, the Western civilization and uh, the HBTQ values in more detail, a research uh, survey discovered that uh, uh, the, the so-called Western, classic Western European countries and US, USA support HBTQ values very overwhelmingly. However, uh, Eastern Europe, which used to be a part of the Soviet Union, they uh, are opposing HBTQ values and stand more for traditional conservative values. And therefore, it is becoming a divide within the European Union uh, with regards to HBTQ values and uh, same-sex marriages. And uh, in, therefore, uh, Russia feel that uh, they, they want to uh, sort of uh, defend uh, the Russian civilization and uh, uh, try to, to uh, incorporate other uh, countries into that civilization. And if we look at uh, um, further into this uh, religious uh, divide and uh, the civilizations, we see that um, the Protestant civilization in Europe has uh, even more secular values than the Catholic civilization. That means that when the Pope is talking about HBTQ values, the Protestants are even more supportive of these uh, uh, values in Europe. And um, um, this trend has of secular values has been most extreme in, uh, in the country where I'm living in Sweden, where, uh, for example, uh, single households used to be only 15% of the population after World War II. Today, a majority of people in Sweden actually do live alone. They, they don't have a wife, they don't have a husband, they don't have children. They are just living alone and uh, they live uh, in, in single households. And this development has also started from the 1970s in Switzerland in Europe from a much lower level with around 5% single households in the 1970s. However, this has tripled up to 15% uh, recently in these years. Uh, so Switzerland is now at the point where Sweden was after World War II. The question going forward is uh, if uh, also Switzerland will uh, develop uh, as how Sweden did after World War II. Is uh, Switzerland also going to become a secularized country or is there going to be a back, backslash against uh, these uh, 
uh, these trends. Um, if we look at uh, research from Professor Huntington, he is asking the question, will it become a dark age? And um, if we're looking at Sweden with the secular values, uh, a lot of dark age uh, phenomena has happened. For example, there has been an explosion in the number of rapes uh, when Sweden secularized. Switzerland has not seen that development at all. So there is a difference. And the question is, will Switzerland follow the, the sort of dark age trend that Sweden has been uh, a leader of in, in Europe? And if we look at uh, the values uh, to the right, Switzerland, Sweden to the left here, we see that Sweden is standing up for gender equality, HBTQ, secularization, and joining the European Union and so on. While Switzerland has stayed more traditional, conservative, and religious values and preserving neutrality. However, if we're looking at uh, the trend that has been going on for the last uh, 30 years, there is an obvious trend that Switzerland is moving in the direction towards Swedish values instead of the other way around. That means that the Western decay continues and it is very difficult to do anything about it because, and that is also possibly what is leading uh, Europe into this conflict in Ukraine against the Russian uh, civilization because Russia simply has refused to be part of this uh, Western decay with uh, what they consider to be, be immoral values and things like that. The only way that I have found in my research uh, when the Western decay continues is that the Western uh, civilization will uh, eventually become possibly uh, destroyed. And uh, uh, then like this uh, citation is saying, holding the fort for a civilization is never easy and building a new one when the old one is shattered is impossible. It has never been done before, but it, uh, it's got to be done if anything is going to uh, going uh, forward along these lines. That means that the, it is necessary to build a new civilization especially in the Western civilization needs to be rebuilt and redeveloped uh, for peace to prevail. Because according to Professor Huntington, civilization approach is the only way to guarantee peace and security. And if civilization is eroded by secular values into the religious foundations of Europe, then Europe is at big risk of having more conflicts instead of less conflicts. And uh, Contributing factors to this is, uh, as I have been talking in previous presentations about the declining uh, sort of emotions that is happening in the Western civilizations where people are losing the enthusiasm and happiness and going down into more sort of worries, boredom, uh, anger, hate, uh, and these kind of things. And that is also supported by the force of the spread of psychiatry in the Western civilization and therefore, uh, the Church of Scientology is trying to reverse these trends by using Dianetics, the modern science of mental health, to improve the sanity of the Western civilization to more positive emotions and more positive thinking. And this has been very successful, for example, in South Africa. And the question now is, uh, can it also happen in the Western civilization? And that's what my research continues to, to focus on. And that is where I see that multidisciplinary research involving Africa and Asia is becoming increasingly important because the values and uh, the thinking in Africa especially is very important for Europe to also consider into its research on peace and security and war and why it's happening and so on. Because uh, even if Europe is maybe still a dominating force, to uh, export secular values to the rest of the world is maybe not going to build a peaceful world. And that was uh, the presentation from my side today. And it's a short presentation, but I hope that uh, I have been able to convey my basic uh, message in my research on international re relations.